Hey everybody, welcome back to Great Northwest Weaponry. This is Thomas, and I finally got a Gewehr 98. I have been looking for one of these for years. This one's a 1913 dated Waffenfabrik Mauser Obendorf. The original and early pre-war manufacturer came with this awesome pipe back bayonet, sometimes called a quill point bayonet. Barrel was a little hotter than I expected it to be. Don't know if you saw me quickly uh, remove my hand, but that that was a little less than comfortable. No, no burns though. These things are awesome. This is pretty much the birth of the modern hunting rifle. Was the Gewehr 98. This is a very storied rifle and a very hard one to get in original condition like this. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go into the gun room and talk about the lengthy storied history of the Gewehr 98. Formerly known as the Infantry Gewehr Model 1898, the Gewehr 98 was introduced in, take a wild guess, 1898. Uh, as such, these rifles would see their initial trial by fire in limited numbers in the Boxer Rebellion in China in the year 1898. They would be chambered in the same 7.92 caliber as the Gewehr 88. This would be the rifle that would be adopted across the board in Germany to replace the Gewehr 88 and any Gewehr 7184s that were still in arsenal or still being used in the field. Uh, as such, the, uh, the Boxer Rebellion is actually a really interesting one because you'll see a blend of the last, you know, 15 years of German weapons development all being displayed all at the same time as you'd have Gewehr 7184s being used alongside Gewehr 98s. So it's an interesting rifle. This is, again, as we already mentioned, uh, you could credit this as being kind of the birth of the modern hunting rifle as most, if not all, bolt action hunting rifles that you're going to come across nowadays are based on or some derivative of the 98 design. And in its time, this design was already incredibly popular. Uh, just about everybody and their dog wanted a piece of what Paul Mauser had released. And uh, you'd see this in the US with the Springfield Model 1903. Uh, even Arasaka's in Japan are uh, designed with a couple of design elements being borrowed from the Gewehr 98. Um, we've even got one that we'll be looking at that's a really obscure one, a Siamese uh, Type 46 that uh, actually was a licensed copy of the Gewehr 98. Now, the obvious bit of history with the Gewehr 98, especially with one dated 1913 such as this one, is the World War I implication. This thing would have probably been fielded right at the beginning. This thing could have marched right through Belgium uh, right in, in 1914 and very well could have seen use all the way up until the end of the war in late 1918. There's a lot of little features to look out for on Gewehr 98s. Um, one big one is a duffel cut. Uh, that's where the stock would be cut so that it could fit in a soldier's duffel bag as a, uh, a trophy that they could bring home. And that cut a lot of times will be hidden underneath this barrel band. Luckily, it's really easy to remove this barrel band with this lever right here. Outside of that, uh, this particular example matches in every single piece that I can identify a serial number on is matched. In 1905, you will also see the uh, the cartridge updated to a Spitzer cartridge indicated by an S on the top of the barrel. Most of them will have this, if not all of them, any of them that you're going to find that are 1898 to 1905 would have likely been rechambered for the Spitzer cartridge which is just a slight amount bigger round than the round nose was. We actually discussed that um, at length in the demo of the Gewehr 88 that we did a while back. So you're gonna hear a lot, you've been hearing a lot of references to the Gewehr 88 and the Gewehr 7184 already at this point. Uh, I have demos made of both of those rifles and they both uh, are kind of spiritual predecessors to this gun as well as the uh, the Spanish Mauser and the um, the Swedish Mauser, Swedish Mauser of which we've taken a look at, which is kind of a, uh, a a slightly altered version of the Spanish Mauser. So all of that culminated in the Gewehr 88. The Gewehr 88 would see use all the way through the Second World War. Uh, 
like I say, in terms of uh, its infantry use in the First World War, this would have been widespread, though there were, um, that were, there was rather a particular complaint that a lot of soldiers had about it, and it's pretty simple. The length, these things are very, very long indeed, coming in a total of 49 inches long with a 29 inch long barrel. And then even beyond that, you'll see um, little variations in the bayonet starting right off the bat, really. So what we uh, started out the video mounted on the gun was this right here, second pattern bayonet, often referred to as a quill point or a pipe back, as it kind of has a long tube running straight down the back of it. It starts at the back, and then once you get to this, this part where it starts to uh, bulge out on the top of the quill point, uh, the pipe continues along flat. This is the second variation, as I'd already mentioned. The quick way to identify that, if you get a pipe back or quill point that is a first variation, the wood grip would be one piece wrapping all the way around the front. If it is two pieces, that's the second variation. The, the one piece was just too prone to breaking. But this thing is monstrous. It, it, this is a just over a 20-inch long bayonet, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Absurdly long and uh, long and thin enough that it's fairly easy to bend. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on this because I don't want to put a bow in it. But there basically just there was issues with this bayonet. And we'll look a little closer at a certain uh, aspect of this uh, dating bayonets on these. It's very easy. We'll look at that when we get to the tabletop. But you see primarily early on the pipe back, quill point, second pattern, whatever. Then you would see those replaced with the mighty butcher blade. This is going to be the most widely produced variant that you're going to encounter. Uh, shorten the blade by about five inches. And by late war, you'll actually start seeing bayonets more reminiscent of the Car 98 bayonet, or the Car 98K bayonet in particular, because Car 98 is not a universal term for Car 98K, though a lot of people um, kind of play it off, I guess, as if it is universally Car 98 means Car 98K. To my point there, uh, in the interwar years between World War I and II, Germany was no longer uh, allowed to produce the Gewehr, or their rifle. Any rifle that they made had to be a carbine, so you'll see the Car 98B popping up in between World War I and World War II. I believe that was adopted in the 20s, like I believe in 1923. If I'm mistaken on that, I'll, I'll post a correction. But... The Car 98B is a carbine in name only. It is the same length as the Gewehr 98. The only real difference you're going to see is an absent of, or absence rather, of the roller coaster sight. Uh, the widely accepted name for this fashion of rear sight here. You'll actually start seeing something a little more reminiscent of the Car 98K appearing on the Car 98B, but you're still going to be the ridiculous Gewehr 98 length. And continuing on with the length thing, as I mentioned, this was uh, considered to be a issue to be solved in the First World War, and you will see uh, other variants such as the Car 98A popping up. Um, I believe it's 1917, might be 1916, but this was actually a substantially shortened rifle, uh, primarily intended for use by cavalry or uh, shock troopers. Stormtrooper units would often be given uh, Car 98As for trench sweeping as they were shorter and handier in trench warfare scenarios. Regardless, the Gewehr 98 is still going to be the most commonly used rifle of the Kaiserreich army. Around 5 million were made from 1898 to 19, uh, 1918. So about 20 years of production, 5 million rifles. That's no small number. Another thing, that, uh, when looking for a Gewehr 98, you're going to, again, notice some different variances. One thing that you should look at universally is the receiver and bolt should not be blued. They should be in the white. Barrel should be blued, sight should be blued, trigger guard should be blued, but the receiver and bolt should not. Also, you will see many of the early ones with a plate on this side rather than the bolt takedown tool as seen on the Car 98K later on. That was a development that was added later during World War One. 
There are other variants of the bayonet that we didn't really touch on much. We mentioned the first pattern and the second pattern that we have, of which second pattern, first pattern bayonets are very rare. Second pattern bayonets, still quite rare. The butcher blade is going to be, again, your most common variant, but there's also the sawback variant, of which was mostly uh, used for things like sawing on tree limbs. If you had uh, like an artillery crew going out, they would often be giving, given sawback bayonets to uh, cut limbs off trees to clear a path for their mortars if need be. So yeah, awesome gun, very storied rifle. I briefly mentioned that they were used all the way through World War II, and there's actually a little thing that you don't really hear about much uh, in World War II. Uh, Hitler actually opted to arm his personal SS bodyguard with a variation of the Gewehr 98 rather than the Car 98. Another thing that you'll notice very plainly, Gewehr 98s have a straight bolt. Car 98s do not. So if you are uh, looking for a Gewehr 98 and you find one with a bent bolt, more likely than not, that is not the correct bolt uh, or it was altered. I could be wrong. There could be a little sub variation somewhere that I'm not aware of that was issued with a bent bolt. But for our purposes, generally speaking, straight bolt is what you're looking for with a Gewehr 98. There were many companies that manufactured these throughout World War I. Uh, this one, as we'd already mentioned, is an actual Mauser, but uh, DWM, Erfurt, Danzig, all the usual suspects, and then some were producing Gewehr 98 rifles for the German army in the First World War. I can't express to you guys how excited I was when I found this. I... I, I borderline panicked, honestly. I was in the process of trying to sell some stuff and just figured, oh, I'll just pop by one of my local gun shops and see what they've got and come in there and I'm being stared in the face by a matching, non-import marked, non-duffel cut Gewehr 98 with a pipe back bayonet. And yeah, it, it had to be mine. So <laughs> it is now and I am a happy man. Let's go ahead and go to the tabletop view and look at some of the markings on this thing and on the bayonets as well, uh, as well as uh, we'll also look at this sight. It's very interesting. So I'd mentioned that we were going to take a look at some of the markings on bayonets first. For one, with the pipe back, at least on this example, I've got a sample size of one here, but manufacturer is printed on the right side of the pipe back, and this one appears to be a shilling out of Sul. And then on the spine, you can see it's a crown, W, and then 06, that's 1906, crown indicating Emperor Wilhelm. On the butcher blade, the manufacturer is actually printed on the opposite side, so in this case, uh, Lunschluss out of Solingen. Still got the crown, W, and then date, 1917 on the spine and then uh, following proof mark down here looks like pretty easy uh, dating these is very straightforward same with dating the rifles in the case of the Gewehr 98 very straightforward it's just printed right on the top of the receiver and then you got you know manufacturer proof marks uh, your S for uh, uh, Spitzer cartridge and then on the opposite side Serial number, Gewehr 98, and your Imperial German acceptance mark. Now, we'd also mentioned taking a peek at the site here because it's just very different. Uh, you can see, kind of, there's a little point coming down from right here. I can actually use the bayonet to point it out better. Right there. That indicates the tag that you're on, the, the uh, range marker that you're actually on there. And it goes from 4 to 20. These are in hundreds of meters, so 400, 500, 600, and so on, all the way up. And the ramp rises. I've seen these called a ramp site, more commonly a roller coaster site. That's what they just kind of generally are referred to as. Very interesting. Bolt removal is going to be standard fare for a Mauser. So just up with the bolt, pull it back, and then pull on that tab there and it pops out. Got a nice cutout for the thumb for feeding. Everything on this is just, it's just well made. Especially this uh, pre-war example. It's 
very finely put together. Let's go ahead and take this back out to the range and put another five through it. Loading the Gewehr 98 is gonna be the same as loading any of your Mauser style rifles. Got a five round clip. We actually uh, managed to pick up some original World War I clips. Just gonna put it in the track there. Use your thumb near the base of the bullet and push in. Got a nice cutout for your thumb that we already looked at. Keep that, I've only got three of these. You can close the bolt over an empty or, or over a loaded magazine without picking up a bullet if you want to. But got a three position safety. That's safe with the ability to manipulate the bolt and then safe with the bolt locked. This is fire. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through another five and don't know if you noticed, but we've got the butcher blade attached now. Yeah, knocked the target sideways, barely clipped it on, I think, the third shot, but uh, I think we managed to hit it every time there. This thing's a nice shooter, guys. Uh, <laughs> it's, again, this is something that I've been searching for for years. I literally was shaking when I actually uh, saw this gun in the store that I picked it up from. You don't see early Gewehr 98s all that often. You don't see Gewehr 98s that are unsporterized or not duffel cut very often at all as we already talked about the duffel cut something that you see very commonly on these and to the best of what i can tell this one has not had such treatment as we mentioned um in the last demo that we did you're gonna be seeing a lot of german guns uh popping up more frequently than usual for a little bit yet from here we've still got the car 98 to take a look at and a luger is on the way so there'll be other stuff sprinkled throughout but you can be see a lot of german lately and uh, and for the future for a little while at least meanwhile hope you all enjoyed as much as i have because this thing is just mm, this might be uh might be my favorite gun <laughs> and uh yeah it's been thomas great northwest weaponry i'll see you next time